welcome to the 93rd episode of Tipping Points and Puzzle Pieces. Um, it will be a solo act today. Marwan is very sick, and it's sorry he's not here, but uh, we still have information to put forward, and we'd like to get to 94 without a break, and it looks like we're going to do that. So, a couple things. <clears throat> First, is that this has been one of the hardest presentation podcasts to put together for me. Um, you've heard me talk about it again and again and again about the playbook um, that is there, not a conspiracy theory. And um, putting that in a quantifiable way to, to generate an idea um, or something you can grasp onto is very hard. And so I've done my best. Um, what I'm hoping is it'll spur questions, and we're hoping that you'll join us on Sunday at Cups Cafe between 10 and noon so we can talk about it, and um, you can ask questions that challenge me, as you can ask them here too, that challenge me to come up with better ways of saying it and explaining it better. Um, we're learning this as we go, and so it's the way it's going to be. It's new stuff. So with that, I'm going to jump into it. Let me bring up the presentation, and we'll go from there. So I've said a playbook. It's a, this is a toxic culture playbook. Our, our, you've heard me say this again and again. Our culture is toxic. It is toxic to our humanity. It is very likely, if we continue unchecked, to kill us. I mean, and, and to cause us to go extinct in the next hundred years. And this is not me saying this, waving a wand and saying this. I mean, you can read it between the lines of the COP28, uh, the COP28 sections. Um, ah, okay, so Marwan says he's here in spirit, but whatever this bug is, he's got it bad. So um, he's bugging out because of the bug. I will continue on with saying that, you know, it, it, it's not me saying that we'll go extinct. This is science. Um, in the COP28 um, meetings, that's all between the lines. The scientists are saying that, you know, the climate is changing and it will affect everything from our housing to everything else. Matter of fact, I just put up a Matt Farrell's Undecided presentation on the Kids Up Resiliency Project page on Facebook uh, talking about how far back American homes are lagging and why from the rest of the world. I, I suggest you, you watch it. It's really interesting. gives you a lot of information. Um, this is the material I cover all the time. I read, I watch, I listen, I question, I look for better source material so that we can present ideas in a way that connects for you. So um, Matt Farrell's Undecided on uh, American Homes and Why They Like Behind. But the playbook and the extinction part of it there are so many factors going forward that we could trip over ourselves and die. It's just that simple. We, it is not a God given right that we're here, no matter what people in your church say, we are here as a species on this planet. If we make it uninhabitable for ourselves, we won't be here. And we're very quickly doing that with climate change, with soil erosion, with not paying attention to the dominoes as they're falling. Now, if that's too depressing for you, go find something else to do, watch Trin and Stimpy or whatever, and let the rest of us talk about how we fix this. So moving on. All right. The scary part, at least scary for me. Um, there is no, oh, by the way, this is Mike Myers as Dr. Evil, for those of you who don't know, so I want to give full credits to this from the Austin Powers mystery or series. Um there is no mastermind behind this. There is no evil genius. There are no series of evil geniuses. There is no family of evil geniuses. There is no long history of evil geniuses handing one off to the other. There is no Illuminati. There is no mastermind behind it, because if they were a mastermind, it would keep the cattle alive, us being the cattle. Um, what it is is a playbook. It is a decision that was made and a program that got put into place that has been continuing on through thousands of years to this point. I recommend you read Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which will give you kind of an outline of how that happened and where we got. Okay, so if it's not a mastermind, what is it? It's Phil from accounting. Yes, it's Phil from accounting. 
No, it is it is the fact that our program is about one thing. It's about generating resources for the for the top ten percent. And it, 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 in, there is no line in the program that says that, but that is how it works. And all you need to do is observe it. So who is in charge? Who's the evil mastermind? Who's making this happen? Well, again, there's no evil mastermind, but there are accountants that make decisions for most corporations based on outcome of short-term profit with no attention to long-term consequences. And the long-term consequences are, look kind of like these two things. The, the one on the, the left is from the game, a life-size uh, uh, build of the game Mousetrap. For those of you who have not played it, because I don't think people play board games anymore, it's essentially you roll a marble and it goes all these different things, falls into a bathtub, rolls around and does all these different things. And eventually a mousetrap comes down. And if you've done it right, a mouse is caught in the mousetrap. And it's very confusing, lots of moving parts. And that's kind of what our life is like, really. So a decision made here uh, up in the corporation is going to roll down and do these things and everything else. And there's some short-term profit made for the people who are shareholders. And there's people paid and then budgets are cut and people are laid off and sales missed a target because people don't have any money and all of these things happen. And then you have this crisis of homelessness at the bottom where they're all caught in the trap. And yes, okay, there are some crazy people out there that are homeless. There are some people who are drug addicts that are homeless. But the amount of homelessness and the growing um, epidemic of homelessness has more to do with the economy than it has to do with any of that stuff. Though that stuff makes it really easy to write it off, doesn't it? Not pay attention to it. But again, from the poem of last week, there was nobody left to speak out for me when they came for me. So we're all on the chopping block, folks. They don't give a damn about us. Okay, so the other picture here, to be simplified, is as long as you're focused, as long as we are focused as a, as a society on money, we're standing in a trap and it's eventually going to close on us. And when it does, it's going to be bad. Already bad, it's going to be worse. It's going to be much worse. Okay, but where does extinction come into that? Well, if we're focused on money, we're not paying attention to things we need to be focused on, like building houses that are more sustainable, uh, reducing our, uh, our use of resources, um, changing our thinking from thinking we own the planet to being part of the planet. There are so many things. And again, I could be here for four days doing this. Let's just keep moving. All right. So missing information. So what the accountants are seeing is a healthy economy because that's what the reporting is. And I'm going to make a comment on that in a second. Um, with money flowing through all sectors of it. But that's not what it really is. <clears throat> and uh, I just heard a report yesterday that President Biden is questioning why people don't react like the economy is doing better when the indicators say that there are more jobs produced and everything else. Um, to be blunt, because everyone knows that the numbers are a lie. And we question, you know, the veracity of, um, our president's ability to not understand that, but it may not be obvious because the, the numbers have been lied about and manipulated for so long under the uh, um, GDP and other me and Department of Labor that it's so occluded in, in, in fog that you can't see it. So he may not actually know that that is, but the economic reality for the rest of the people on the planet, or in the United States certainly, is not rosy. And, you know, there may be low job reports, but people have fallen off those reports and aren't being reported at all. And I think that's what's missing here. What the reality is, as I've shown in several uh, presentations, is we have an upside down pyramid where there's extreme poverty and there's a disappearing middle class, uh, and then the top 10% get 80% of everything, almost 90% of everything, and that's a vacuum cleaner sucking all the cash up to the top. It is not a, a, a healthy economy, and at some point it is going to collapse. And when it does, it's going to be ugly for everybody, including the people in the top 10%, because it will collapse big time. It's going to make the depression look like a cakewalk. And by the way, I don't really know what a cakewalk is, but it sounds good. 
All right, so historical perspective. We started off with re resource control thousands of years ago. People locked up the food and made, you know, and, and controlled the resources so that they would be secure and everybody can thrive. Except some thrived a lot more than others, and that got to be kind of a pattern going on here. And then it became the one right way to show everybody that, you know, we will share resources if you come with us and do what we do and, and do how we do it. And this is thousands of years and it became, you know, uh, city states and then religions and then education. And it's been going on and changing and, and forming as we go. And then finally, we have assimilation, which actually started from the beginning because if people didn't come of their own volition, we assimilated them. And we being the predominant population, the predominant culture of the world, and has nothing to do with gender or any of the othering stuff. It has to do with philosophy and uh, practice. Okay. All right. So here's the timeline. Homo sapiens, which was past Neanderthal, um, wandered around in small tribal groups. Okay. We were hunter-gatherers. We, we it lived in an area until the resources started to deplete and we moved on so they can regenerate and we could find someplace else. And we would keep doing that. We did this for, you know, 150,000 years, pretty much or more because there were Neanderthals and, and, and transitional points in between humans were hunter gatherers. Now we will never know what the evolutionary path for that would have led to because we discovered agriculture and, we will never know what other choices we had when we discovered agriculture because we changed from a pneumatic to a static culture for the most part. And then someone decided that, you know, some group of people, some to council, some leadership decided locking up the food was for security. And, and that was not evil in and of itself or bad or, or world changing into itself. But what it did do is it allowed a shift in control to happen. When that shift in control happened, the progression from there was to start bringing other people into the area and creating uh, an assimilation culture and uh, starting to develop the one right way, which happened over a thousand years. And then we had a religion happen in, in major ways. We went from tribal religions and ways of telling stories about our life to a more um, codified way of the Bible and uh, the Quran and the Torah. And that became the one right ways that not even the religions could agree on. So we have been splitting and splitting and splitting as that goes forward. Um, then it really took off. I mean, we had changes and, 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 co and countries and, re and relationships and um, diplomacy and wars and everything else for the next 1,500 years. And about 260 years ago, we had the Industrial Revolution. That, the railroads, and everything that happened after that became about wealth generation in a way that it had never been before. And now you don't have um, royalty or lords and ladies managing things or priests or priests. Now you have industrialists. People who got rich off of manufacturing and learned about wealth control and became very, very wealthy. And now the merchant class actually outstripped all of the, the royalty class, the political class, the, the religious class in money because they learned how to make money. And that changed things, too, um, because while the one right way religion and monarchies and such were slower to change things, um, and and exert, in a um, exerted control in a very different way. Industrialists were all about just grabbing, grabbing, grabbing whatever they could get. The robber barons, the teapot dome, all of the things of the of U.S. history and British history from that point forward were more about that. And then forty years ago, and you see how this is accelerating. And forty years ago, um, we started with the information age. And then we learned how to hide information and we learned how to move information and we learned how to manipulate things to create more wealth so that there's really just a virtual 
uh, marketplace to generate wealth now. I mean, basically, you have the stock market. We, we aren't manufacturing anything. We export culture. We don't manufacture and export anything. We are the central social hub of the world. Okay? We don't really manufacture. What we manufacture is wealth by manipulating numbers and data. And that's what the information age bought us, which massively accelerated the the process. And this is where accountants are making choices that probably should be made by people who are looking at a much larger group of information than the accountants are looking at and seeing long-term consequences instead of short-term gain. And even our agriculture is looking at short-term gain year after year after year and survival of by money year after year after year. And we're eroding our soil so that we won't be able to grow in 60 years is what the scientists are saying. So that kind of gives you the timeline of what's going on. Now, I'm not, there's no animation here. So we'll just kind of like talk about this a little bit. Um, artificial intelligence from hell. I'm going to relate this to artificial intelligence. And I think you'll see with me in a couple slides that this makes a lot of sense. The, the, Artificial intelligence in this case is our culture, our society, the um, the framework in which we all live and agree to live and accept our, our places in the society. Now, there's a promise that we will be able to exceed that, but that promise is actually not very often a reality. And even people, which I find immensely horrifying is people who win the lottery and win millions of dollars end up broke more often than not. Um, but then the question is, is what computer are we using to run this AI? Because it's 15,000 years old. It, it basically formed our cultural guidelines in which we live. We did all of humanity and all of humanity did it because all of, oops, all of humanity did it because all of humanity is interconnected on a cellular level. And as a cultural level, we are linked and we have this like, and this is where I have trouble talking about because I don't have the science, but the science exists that we have a cultural mindset that, that transcends our normal day talking. We, 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 we crave that framework. And that framework was written by the people who locked things up and did the run right, one right way. That's how it all got programmed. And it's just running the program. There's no one in charge of it. There's no one reprogramming it or anything else. It's just running a program. And we're all living our lives within that program. And eventually that program is going to run down. And so are we. And that's what's going on. Um, it's the interconnectivity that is, is our strength and our weakness. And as long as the, the, the cultural AI really doesn't want us to see the interconnectivity, well, not making a choice of that. It just is part of the, the programming is to keep us separated, keep us othering, keep us different so we don't pay attention and come together and, and reprogram the AI. Um, it's a self-defense mechanism within the, the, the cultural framework. And I, I don't mean to make this sound scientific and, and computer-related, but I thought it was the easiest way to say this. But this is how we work. We work within cultural frameworks. We work within social contracts. And the acceleration of this process went from a monarchy uh, or hierarchy, political hierarchy or religious hierarchy, to chaos in a very, very short time frame. And we're all just riding this train, and we can't continue to ride it without making a change. Okay, so the programming, it's an organic process. Uh, it's an intent of creating the one right way for humans. That's that's the goal. And the one right way for humans is to have a hierarchy, and some of the people at the top get way more than everybody else. And um, it's in our consciousness. It, 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 it's what we accept as reality. And as long as we accept that at some level as reality, it will continue to run the process. And we don't matter. We are supplanted for the needs of the program. Look at the way layoffs happen. Look at the, the, the things that make no sense. Um, this is what's happening. All right. So are humans dumb? I mean, God knows I'm guilty of saying 
that that human species is dumb. But I just recently started thinking about this. Um, one of my least favorite combination of words is human resources because it's neither. Um, but it looks as humans as resources, so that's honest in its way. And for our entire time of this cultural AI, um, humans have been resources. We don't matter the process and the program it does. What the outcome matters. We don't matter. We are just cogs in the machine that are there as resources to make the outcome happen. So what happened to us? Um, and, and this is where the dumb part comes in, and I'll, I'll, I'm hopefully going to explain this in a clearer way. Um, all right. So as human beings, we are wired, and I've talked about this in several other uh, of the recent uh, presentations, we are wired for humanity. Good news, bad news, we're interconnected, we're wired for humanity. There are cultural things that we need to have to uh, thrive, um, to be human, to work together, and they don't exist anymore except in very virtual ways. And we all feel that unbonding on a day-to-day -day basis, but most of us never learn to ask the questions about it. So are we dumb or just disconnected? And I think a lot of times... People make bad choices because of the disconnection. They're not really dumb. They're just unable to live within a world that is no longer designed for them. And they don't know why. And no one's answering the questions. No one's even asking the questions. And I think that we get the lowest common denominators that we see all the time because there's frustration, there's anger, there's thousands and thousands of ways to act out against the fact that everything's broken and we don't feel connected, which is answers the drug use and craziness uh, aspect that seems to be growing in our lives. Because we are living in a world that is not designed for humans, but pretends like it is, but it doesn't meet our needs. And until we start looking at that square in the face, we'll never be able to address it. And so are we dumb? Are we crazy? Are we drug addicts? Yes, but not necessarily because we're inherently that way. More to the point, we are um, living in a world that isn't designed for us anymore and hasn't been for a long time. So let's talk about the cultural element of control. What things are used to control us? Well, obviously resources and money. That's the most obvious. Education. Uh, and our, our ever more redactive education system that is is driving us uh, to learn less and less useful things and study to the test and not ever ask any questions and to believe the great lie that everything is there already. We just need to look for it. Religion in all forms, and I'm not dogging on any one religion, and I do, do want to say here because you're hearing me say this a lot, is that I am a spiritual person, um, but I recognize that religion it by and large is a means of control in our society and has been for a very long time. And I choose to have my spirituality be a reflection of me and not some person telling me what God thinks. Um, media, we get it in commercials, we get it in social media, we get it in trolls, we get it in people burying information on Google. We talked about this last week. Um, these are elements and ways of controls and planting ideas and keeping us in, in, in the framework of, the, of, of the, the cultural AI. Politics, obviously, employment, whether you're a corporation or a single employer, employment matters because your whole life depends on that paycheck. And so you are inherently enthralled to the employer, whoever they are, for whatever time. And there are some heinous heinous practices out there that all of us have experienced or friends of ours have experienced. Uh, social engagements of all level. I mean, we, we are all about competition over cooperation. We're all about showing off who we are because we need that, that, that hole in us filled that we don't have from, um, from human interaction in any real way. Okay. So, we are in a crisis in progress. I think we've said that enough. Um, the 
slide on or the picture on the right is a, a picture which took me a long time to find. There was a study a while back of what it would look like in our planet 400 years in the future, a thousand years in the future, if humans went extinct. And essentially what it says is that the planet's going to reclaim everything and will do just fine without us. Things will rebalance because we will be mucking with the climate um, and stealing and taking all the resources and filling landfills with them. It will have time to re, 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 reset itself. Uh, aquifers that we drain that take 10,000 years to recharge will recharge. And it will be a paradise. It just won't have us. But the choice is, and, 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 and Marwan and I talk about this frequently, um, I, am, I am a fan of the Roddenberry future, of making a choice to go to a place we haven't been before. Yes, I know I'm boldly going where no man has gone before. Sorry about that. But it is, um, I think our best path forward is to choose to do something different together. And we have a whole long process that it again a long time to go through. Please come to CUPS and sit down with us and talk um, because I think you'll be very interested in where that can go. Um, our basic training says that nothing can change, nothing, we have no power to change things. Yeah, we do. And we can do that. Uh, the Roddenberry future is one. Uh, the, the discussion more I wanted to have is that there was a crisis that happened. Uh, nuclear wars, and, and we chose to save humanity and move forward. Well, we don't have a nuclear war yet, but we have a choice ahead of us, and we have a crisis on our face, and the human race is at risk. So I think it's a great time to shift gears and come together and make a different future. All right, so reprogramming. What's that going to take? Wow, I mean, it, this thing's been going for 15,000 years. It's this program, and, 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 and it's this framework, and it's overwhelming, and I don't remember half of or 10% of what Mark just said. Um, how are we going to do this? Well, it's going to take time, okay? For, this is generational work, okay? But we can make some really good progress really quickly with some minor steps. Uh, but we have to be, get connected. We have to bring our puzzle piece to the table, we have to talk to other people. We have to get an idea of what's going on. We have to make up our minds to do something. Okay? We have to talk until we find consensus on what needs to be done and what needs to be done first. So not all, all ideas are going to be on the table. But we some things are more pressing than others. Water um, is really pressing. Uh, food is really pressing. Uh, housing, obviously very pressing. Uh, with climate change changing, it's going to become more pressing in a lot of ways that you're not even thinking about at the moment. So coming to consensus on those things, really important. If you feel like you're not capable of being a leader, come to the table anyhow, because there are things you can do that will make life different for yourself and better for yourself and everybody in your community. And it's easy to do. And there's, there's already guidelines to do it. You don't have to, like, develop something. You can just join us in doing stuff. I mean, you can join us going over to Matt's house and work on his garden. And there's going to be work to do that between now and spring. So come talk. Intent. I can't tell you how important having intent is. Once you have consensus, you have to have intent to do something about it. You have to focus on that and choose to do something. That's very important. And continuity, you have to keep doing it. You have to teach your children to do it. They have to teach their children to do it. This is how it moves forward. All right? Okay. I love this Disney quote. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. So come join us in doing. You know, we're talking here. We talk on social media. Join us at Cups Cafe and let's start doing. It's a journey. And journeys are best taken together. So bring your peace. Come to us at Cups Cafe. Sundays, 10 till noon, 409 Pacific Avenue in downtown Bremerton. Come have coffee with us. We're not selling you anything. We just want to answer your questions. We want to talk to you about the future. And, you know, this is an opportunity to change the future for the better. And we aren't even telling you how that's going to happen because some of that's actually most of it's going to come from you guys. All right. So thank you for sharing your time with me. 
and uh, having us talk about this. It's going to be a little shorter today because Marwan's not here to interject and we can't do the conversation for you. And uh, don't see anything popping up in the um, in the comments. So feel free to check out our webpage at www.rosecco.org. I'll put it over here. And uh, our Facebook page. So um, And our Facebook page is the Kitsap the Kitsap Resiliency Project on Facebook. Um, you know, come together with us. And if you want to support us on Patreon, it's Resilience Resilient Communities on Patreon. Thank you for your time. Um, there will be a more full one next week. Um, and I hope if you didn't enjoy it, you at least got something from it. Stay hydrated. Try and be happy. Take care. <laughs>